Here with head coach Terry Horan as you prepare for your last regular season game at Gustavus. Uh, coming off a tough loss at against St. Thomas uh, last Saturday. And before the game, we had talked a little bit about how one individual play can kind of swing things. But I think against St. Thomas, it was kind of a series of plays right there at the end of the second quarter that kind of snowballed and then put you guys having to chase the game from there on out. It was a great game until that point. Uh, talk a little bit about how you guys started the game with getting that 7 nothing lead and at the end of the first quarter you're up 7 nothing. Were you guys, could you sense that you guys were playing well at that time? Yeah, you know, anytime we start a game, obviously we want to we want to make sure we establish ourselves and it doesn't get much better than, you know, really from the second play from scrimmage, we run a uh, option play and Jason Montoni gets the pitch and you know, they were in some man coverage and, and we did a different, uh, some different motioning that got him out of position and we got the pitch out to him and he had, he had uh, nothing but green grass, but, you know, you give St. Thomas credit because their team speed's incredible. You know, they were able to catch Jason Montoni, who's probably one of our fastest players, but going up 7 nothing obviously gave us a lot of confidence and, and uh, they were so big and physical up front offensively and I thought our D's, you know, we were hanging in there. And, uh, you know, one of the turning points in my eyes was when we had the pick and we had the short field and one play later we give the ball right back to them. So, you know, we go from getting the momentum back into our corner. We're late in the second quarter at this juncture. We're down 15 to 7 at this point. And who knows, if we could tack on, you know, 7 and, and not chase points and just be at 15 to 14, you know, it could have been... You know, the very worst case scenario be down 15 to 7, you know, going in at half. But yeah, the last three minutes it was, um, it was tough business and, and uh, you know, dropping the snap on punt and gave him another short field. And boy, when you're down 28 7 to a team uh, like at St. Thomas, uh, that's, that's tough sledding. That's a lot of uphill climbing. And our kids give them credit. We battled, we, uh, we were scratching and clawing. And, never gave up and, and when we hung in there and, and uh, just um, you know when somebody's up that big they can start pinning their ears back and start getting you out of what you want to do and and, uh, and that's kind of what happened. They're a good football team. Uh, a, little, a couple of players that showed up defensively that you know people might not be recognized. First uh, Derek Rachel, one of the linebackers that doesn't get a lot of pub because of Eric Bayer and Levi Hintermeister. And then also Dallas Raftevold, people will know the Raftevold name, but not Dallas, who's an right. up-and-comer for your team. Yeah, both of those guys have been steady performers all year. You know, Rachel being a senior, he brings a lot of athleticism and strength, and, and we felt that, uh, you know, he probably had one of his best games. And then Dallas Raftevold, he's just, uh, he's an up-and-coming safety for us, and, and uh, he's a gamer. And in these big games, he's always showing up, and, and we need more of that. Now let's look up forward to Saturday against Gustavus, and you talk about having big games defensively need to show up. That's what's going to have so. to happen on uh, Saturday because you're playing a group of guys, you know, Gustavus, who's offensively very talented. Plus, I mean, it's a group of senior-led uh, offensively, their quarterback and wide receivers. Yeah. What do you guys need to do? You've had success against them last year and the years past. What do you? What have you done last year to be successful? And what do you need to do on Saturday? Well, you're right. They're very explosive. Mitch Hendricks, um, you know, has been a three-year starter for them after he transferred to Gus Davis from St. John's, and he's got the Boyce brothers that are his top targets uh, out the wideout spot. Uh, he's got pretty much their entire offensive line back. So they had seven starters back on offense that, you know, those guys put up a ton of numbers a year ago. In fact, in our game last year, they threw the ball 62 times. Uh, we also had five picks in that game. And I think the big thing with that is, you know, our guys just reading their keys, being, you know, aligned right and, and go out and, and make plays. We, I don't know if we can stop these guys. I mean, they've been... You know, they're number two in the league in total offense. Uh, we're number four uh, in total offense. But uh, somehow, some way, we got to find a way to stay on the field offensively and, uh, and eat that clock and move those sticks and, and keep uh, Hendricks and his team, you know, on the sideline. Uh, that, that could be a probably, um, you know, a great way of slowing them down is have them stand and get chilly on the sideline. 
Now, do you guys do anything, this being the last regular season game, do you guys do anything special in practice as you're going through this whole week? Do you guys, you know, do you need to do anything to keep the guys focused uh, and keep them centered on what they need to do? You know, we had a good talk Sunday night. You know, when you when you come off a, a loss in, in, in like we did in a big game with St. Thomas, you know, everybody's spirits are, are pretty down. But, you know, the, the one thing I wanted to remind them of is, you know what, you're 7-2 and two and you got an opportunity to go 8-2 and two the fourth time in four years and it's never been done before and so there's still a lot to play for here. Uh, aim 2 sounds a lot better than 7-3 in my book and and our kids have been really good this week. I mean there's certain things that we do kind of a traditional things. Um, all our seniors uh, on Wednesdays, it's kind of funny, it's, it, it's humorous but uh, we get a good chuckle out of it. It's called Fallen Soldier Day. And what that is, is all the recruits that would come in as freshmen, if they haven't made it through their senior year, they'll put their name on the back of their jersey uh, just to recognize somebody who, who didn't make the four years. And, and uh, so everybody, you know, has a good smile about that and brings back some good memories. And, but then like today, today will be your favorite high school jersey day. And uh, so it keeps the practices light, but also our guys know that... Uh, you know what, we need to be focused because we got one whale of a game in front of us down at St. Peter on Saturday. Good luck. Yeah, thank you.